Tesla has previously said that its energy storage division, the unit that makes utility and home batteries, will probably be its big growth engine. Um, our guest just toured one of the Automark's mega pack battery facilities, and he gives that business a higher valuation than Tesla's standalone car operations. We're joined by Tom Narayan, lead global autos analyst at RBC. You've had this thesis for a while now that the real value in Tesla is not the cars. If I have your numbers right, you say 10% of the value is for cars, 10% for the batteries, but something like 80% for the intellectual property and the technology and autonomous and robo taxis. Yeah, the actual car business, you know, if I value it at the same multiple as Ford or GM or Volkswagen, it's only worth about 70 to $80 billion in my math. And, you know, my price target has Tesla at a trillion dollars of value. How long, Tom, do you think it'll be before we have truly autonomous cars? In 10 years, will we be able to just get into a car and tell it where to drive and we don't have to touch the controls? No, unfortunately not. Uh -oh. It's going to take a long while. <laughs> yeah. My valuation on robo-taxis, for example, which is the full uh, level four autonomy, actually, I look at that on 2040. Oh. And then I discount that back. But the thing is, it's such a huge opportunity. Right now, cars is about a $3 trillion industry, $3 trillion per year. With autonomy, you take share from planes, from trains, the living room with wheels. It's a bedroom with wheels. It's an office with wheels. So you could just see the market share this thing could take up from other uh, spaces. And it's going to be far way out, but it's such a big opportunity that when you discount that back to today, it's still very big. With the RoboTaxi and FSD, they can actually sell a subscription to you. You would pay, you know, right now it's $200 a month, but I see that coming down. So if that's $50 a month for a car to drive itself, wouldn't you take it? I would. <laughs> Oh for, oh, for sure. I mean, because we know it's absurd. We buy a car and what is it? 90% of the time it just sits there rusting on the driveway or the street. Exactly. And uh, and people are willing to pay $1.90 per mile for an Uber, right? To not have to deal with that. Private car costs 53 cents per mile to use. A robo taxi is only 33 cents per mile. So imagine a product where consumers willing to pay $1.90 that it costs you only 33 cents to operate. Autonomy to me is really where the game is gonna be played here for Tesla because effectively as, a, as an autonomy, it's a software company which generates much better profitability than the car business. I apply like a 10 times software multiple for robo taxis and FSD and I get the majority lion's share of the value for my $1 trillion uh, valuation for Tesla from that business. After that, the mega pack business, as you pointed out, and then a distant third, the actual car business. And are they on the point of becoming the de facto standard for auto chargers in the States? Yeah, but I mean, I think that the, the charging is less of a profit center or money maker for Tesla. It's more of an opportunity for other car companies to use their charging network, and then they can sell products to other car companies like batteries, power electronics, autonomy. Mm. <laughs> so I think that's really the secret to the charging network. Um, it's not really a big profit center. Just finally, China, how much of a problem is that for Tesla, weak sales in China? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a concern, but I wouldn't overblow it because um, remember, there was a year-over-year -year tough comparable because of Chinese New Year in February. This year was January last year. So that had an impact. I mean, BYD also was down significantly year-over-year. Uh, -year. Uh, and we've known that Tesla's car sales are in a bit of a lull right now, right? The three and the Y are a little bit saturated. Maybe that ludicrous mode <laughs> will help things a little bit. Uh, but we have to wait until... Uh, 2026, probably when the next big model comes, the, the affordable car, that will be the next big thing to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, until that happens, and the company's been very transparent about this, we're going to have a little bit of a slowdown in growth in 2024. Tom, it's always great talking to you, and thanks very much indeed. Tom Narayan yeah. is lead global autos analyst at RBC Capital Markets.